Welcome to Great Hope's television series, a television program that brings you hope, great hopes in the Lord, a television program that encourages you to study your Bible and to grow spiritually every day in your relationship with God. We hope as you continue to watch these programs that you will be renewed in your mind and fortified in your spirit. In today's message, Dr. Pastor Tunde Ojewale encourages us on how to renew your mind. You see, in the process of our daily walk, our daily talk, our, uh, the way we, we, we live every day in our workplaces, in our school, in schools and things that we do every day, our spiritual relationship with God and our relationship with others become stained and things break down. So there is a need for a renewal, a renewal in Christ, a renewal in the Lord, a renewal of our minds. Dr. Ojewele makes it clear that it's important uh, if we must grow spiritually, if we must come closer to the Lord, that we can't afford not to renew our minds every day. As you watch, may the Lord give you the strength and the courage to find renewal in your mind. May God bless you as you watch. Faith in the promise of His welcome you again today to your very favorite program, Great Hope, where God declares to you again that hope will rise for you from obscurity. Amen. And your hope shall be renewed in the Lord, Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We continue again in our series, The Bible and Spirituality. 
as we consider the topic today, how to renew your mind. How to renew your mind. Will you please bow as we call on Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you. We give you praise for another opportunity that you have given us to come before you and seek your face and learn of you. May your word be made very clear to us today. May our lives be renewed. May we follow you fully. Bless the listeners and hear us. And help them, Lord, to draw closer to you than ever before. I ask and pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to Romans chapter 12. As we read verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Paul writes, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Do you say amen? amen. How to renew our minds. The mind. The mind is too important a thing to let go to waste. The enemy understands that. And every day, Satan assaults the minds of our children. He assaults our mind. Whether it is the obnoxious pictures on the billboards or at the checkout line in the grocery store. Or whether it is the magazines that you almost cannot avoid seeing. As you go around, Satan assaults our mind with teenage suicide and pregnancy out of wedlock children. He assaults our mind with the kidnapping and abduction that is going, school shooting, with the pornography that is rampant around. He assaults our mind with the drug use that is seen and disobedience that is rampant. The enemy attacks our minds. I'm sorry to say, we don't totally have our minds screwed up right sometimes. And somebody is saying, what is the preacher saying? Well, maybe you have not been on the highway lately. Or maybe on the Lagos by the highway. You will hardly see a little obstruction before traffic will face one another. Only for Nigerians to be patient for one minute, they'll begin to drive at the opposite direction. I think something may be wrong with our mind. All of us, if we'll be truthful, may be experiencing a little psychosis somewhere. That may be too hard, you may say. But I do not understand why a man will leave his family and go and mess around somewhere else. Something wrong with that mind. Something wrong. I don't understand why somebody will work and labor for years and decades and just walk away at the time of harvest. Something is wrong with our mind after 6,000 years of sin. Satan has messed and screwed up our minds. We see good. We call it bad. We see bad and we embrace it. We see the enemy. We call them friend. And we run away from a true friend. We see dark. We call it light. Or say it's beige. The enemy is messed with our minds. We call joy sadness. And we call sadness joy. 
I stand here before you saying as a human being without the help of God renewing and inspiring my mind, I don't know what is best for me. And so is it with you. What we want is what we reject. What will hurt us is what we pay a lot of money for. Oh God, renew our minds. You look at the religion today. Churches are multiplying, but morality is going down. Every nook and corner, you see somebody with a religion shouting on the microphone or somewhere, yet they are messing with the female in their worship center. God have mercy. The Bible continues to be the most sold book, the bestseller every year for decades. Yet, the biblical illiteracy is increasing. And morality or immorality is increasing. Why? Why? I must ask. We need to renew our minds. That's what Paul writes. So let's go back and look at that text again. He says we must present our lives as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, our reasonable service. We should not be conformed to the world, and we must be transformed by the renewing of our minds. A lot of key words are seen in that text. For instance, it says we should be transformed. It is the same word for metamorphosis. It means we must be changed. We must grow into something mature. We must not be conformed. It means we should not let the world change us into its mold. Rather, we should let the Bible, the Word of God, mold our lives. If you believe that, let me hear you say amen. amen. Our minds are bombarded with various messages against that. Satan wants to mold us in his own image. And God says... I will make man in his own image. There is a contention over you as you are hearing me today. God wants you to look like him. And Satan wants you to look like him. Some of you are amorphrodites. Half animal, half human beings. Half godly, half worldly. Hello? Hello? We need our minds renewed. How do we do this? The Bible has a lot to say about it. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, in Hebrews 12, verse 2. For your mind to be renewed, you have to change what you focus on. That is why Paul writes it in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Second Corinthians 3, 18, Paul writes, By beholding, we are changed. I want you to repeat that with me. Beholding, we are changed. Oh, come on, you've got to wake up and help me with this. Beholding, we are changed. Okay, let's make it more personal. Find somebody and say, What you are beholding is changing you. If yours is home movie all the time, he's changing you. In fact, I'm surprised to say that our church children are not looking like church children. Their language are worldly language because we are raising our kids with the television. Hollywood and Nollywood have become the heroes of our little ones. Oh, how much we need to renew our minds. And we must tell the young people, garbage in, garbage out. All those things you are watching, maybe in secret, or some of you have paid for cable for evil stuff to come inside your living room. All kind of violence raising your kids. And their minds are all messed up. 
They may be in prayer meeting with you, but their minds are far away. God have mercy upon us. Paul in 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says, we must be renewed day by day. We must think of those things, Philippians 4, 8, that are true. The things that are noble. The things that are right. The things that are pure. The things that are lovely. The things that are admirable. If there is anything excellent and praiseworthy, Paul says in Philippians 4, 8, think on such things. Think what's on your mind. God wants to renew your mind. He wants to transform your mind. You are too conformed to the world right now. God needs to change. You see, the mind is the center of intelligence. The mind is the center of consciousness. The mind is the control center where the will is determined. The mind is the place of your decision making. The mind is the place of perception. A place of judgment and reasoning is the seat of your governance and personal administration. Your mind is where the center of your values are. It is your innermost value. You must change your mind under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Many people's minds are hard like concrete. You see, when you pour concrete, concrete takes the shape of the container. Am I right? And concrete is set. Some of you, what your preacher told you has set your mind and you're not listening to the word of God anymore. Some of you, your culture has predetermined you in a way that your mind is set. Even those who say they are educated are so close-minded. And God is worried about your ignorance. True education should exchange an empty mind with an open mind. A mind open to the Holy Ghost ready to receive. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. So the Bible says, change your mind, renew your mind. It means, let your mind receive extensive makeover through the work of the Holy Ghost. God wants to restore your mind, returning it to his original perfect state. God wants to refresh your mind by supplying you with life energy from his throne. He wants to renovate you by cleansing and repairing you through his word. He wants to rejuvenate you and restore your youthful spiritual vigor. Some of you are used to be. Oh, I used to sing. I used to give. I used to go for prayer meeting. Oh, I used to attend Small groups used to. God does not have any use to. God will renew you in the name of Jesus. Amen. He will bring back what Satan has stolen from you. Amen. Renew your mind means to transfigure you. To exalt and glorify himself in you. To renew you is to transform you by giving you a major change and mature you in function. It is metamorphosis, an abrupt startling change induced by the supernatural power of God that will progress you in development. God wants to transmute you by doing something higher for you. He needs to convert you. He needs to alter your life. He needs to modify and regenerate you. And the question is, are you ready? Are you ready for the Holy Spirit to change you? To renew your mind, you must spend time in God's word. I want somebody to repeat that. Spend time in God's word. The word of God must feed you. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live by food alone, but by what? Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Listen to me. If you watch more TV than you read your Bible, there is a problem for you. 
Man shall not live by bread alone. Many of you overcommit to human beings and undercommit to God. That has to change. You must spend time in the secret. God who hears you in the secret, he will reward you openly in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know what you are waiting on God for. He will answer you. He will do exceedingly, abundantly, above what you can think or ask for you. He will give you a progressive mind. He will take away your cynical and critical mind. God will put a new wine in a new bottle inside your life. Everything that rejects the blessing of God, God will eject it from your life. You didn't hear that. There are many people that their lives are rejecting the will of God and the word of God. How can God help you when he has sent his word to heal you and you are running away from that which is to help you? The story is told of a woman going back home one day at night after work. She entered her car not knowing that an assailant, a thief, had forced the door open and was hiding on the back seat of her car with a gun. She started her car and started hurrying home. And the thief was looking for the appropriate time to raise his head off from the back seat and deal with her. Suddenly, a trailer was overtaking this woman. And from the advantage point of the trailer, saw that the woman was to be in trouble and her assailant was hiding in the back seat. And the woman said, what do I do? The trailer driver said, what do I do? Let me help the woman pack so I can defend her. So he tried to overtake the woman and the woman said, me? Trailer? No way. She began to speed, running away and she thought, this man is trying to kill me. Let me run away. She saw one exit and saw a police sign. She quickly exited and ran into the compound. The trailer driver ran after the car, stopped the trailer, did not go after the woman, but went to the back seat and pulled the assailant out and overpowered the assailant. Amen. It was at that point that the woman came back and said, oh, thank you, thank you. I was running away from the person who was trying to help me. There are many of you, you have been running away from God who has the antidote to the sickness of your life. He wants to renew your mind. Run to Jesus now. If that's your decision, I want you to bow your heads where you are. And let's call upon Jesus. Almighty God, many here have been running away from you. You have been trying to help us, trying to renew our mind. We have embraced the enemy and the wicked one. We have loved the lie and hated the truth. Oh God, forgive us in the name of Jesus. Amen. I ask you today, that you will exchange our minds, that we may think like Jesus, that this mind may be in us that was in Jesus Christ. This is my prayer now and always in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Oh, let's say it louder, amen. amen. God will renew your mind. Amen. He will renew your life. Amen. He will renew your business amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Until next week, when my title will be, Character Matters. May the hope of God beam in your soul. God bless you. We have this hope that burns within our